G'day guys. Now I know this looks horrific, but this is just a proof of concept video for adding a second wireless charger to the Kia EV5 GT line. Now, as you may or may not know, the EV5 GT line comes with this wireless charger. Um, I don't know why Kia decided to leave this uh, out of the lower models. It's ridiculous when the wireless chargers themselves are only a handful of dollars, but, oh well, whatever. Can't help that, I'm sorry. Um, installing a wireless charger in this space um, in the lower models isn't impossible, I'm assuming, but um, there's no need for me to um, f to do it, so I'm not going to get um, into any of those details. Um, but actually, while I'm here, I just noticed I left my screen cleaner. These are excellent. If you um, ever need a nice little portable um, screen cleaner for your touchscreen, um, these I found these are fantastic. They're very, very cheap. Available on AliExpress. They come in this little package. So you push this out. Um, mine came with fluid. Uh, so there's actually a little spray bottle inside. Um, and it fits into there nice and neatly. All you do is spray, spray, spray on the screen, just a couple of pumps. And the covering is actually like a suede material. And you basically just use this as a bar to... Um, to wipe the screen down it does a fantastic job but of course as with anything you get one little bit of grit on here you're going to be scraping that across your screen so just be careful but yeah they're only um i think they're only a couple of dollars um and the fact that it slides in there and you throw it in your glove box fantastic oh and that suede also matches the uh finish on the top of the um the ev5 gt line dashboard not that that's important of course anyway back to the problem at hand so comes with one wireless charger great um, comes with the USB ports there great that's fine but what if the passenger wanted to charge and not have the mess of cables well I thought huh that's interesting um, how am I going to solve that so I've come up with this idea so to put a wireless charger underneath the bottom pad and to do it as non-destructively as possible, as per all my modifications. However, I have a feeling this one may need light modification or light destruction, <laughs> um, but it's the type of modification that's really not going to make any difference. If you did want to reverse it, um, you won't even be able to notice. So to begin with, you obviously need to access um, behind this panel. Now with my trusty trim removal kit over there, um, available on Amazon for about $10 or from local hardware stores for about $20, and my amazingly high quality, low quality um, toolkit, um, what I found was this is actually clipped in. You can see the white clips. There's one there, there's one a bit further down, one in the middle, uh, one on this side, and obviously one down on the other side and that pulls forward. But before you do that, you actually need to um, remove the footrest because the footrest is bolted in at the bottom with this 12 mil bolt or 12 mil head bolt in this hole covered by that cap um, into the bottom. The top just slides over that post. You can just see in the background if it focuses. Yeah, the top slides over that post. But that stops you from pulling all of this forward. Okay, so the first thing you've got to do, pull all your mats out, um, or your yeah, extra mats of course, um, and then remove this um, footrest. Once you've done that, um, there's a clip, small clip on the side. That's just a normal clip. You just pull that clip out, and that's it there. And you do the same on this side. There's the clip there. Um, ignore these um, bolts for the time being um, and then once you've done that use your trim removal tool and um, what you can do is pull this out which actually flexes the top of this plastic a little bit and allows you to get your tool removal kit in there and then you just pull forward okay you have to be fairly aggressive 
um, because it's got to do uh, both clips, that one and that one, and then slide it over to the middle, slide it over to this side, and pull, 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 and you can get it to this stage. This is really the only stage you need to get it to because it just gives you enough space, I'll try to show you here, um, to access what we need to access, okay? And that's what I'll get into now. Don't mind all the dust all over the place. Okay, so I'll just uh, kneel down on the driveway. So a wireless charger, for those who aren't tinkerers, is basically this. So it's just a coil of wire on a ferrite, a thin ferrite um, sort of pad. So that is a very, very brittle um, pad. So, and I've actually cracked the one I've just installed. So you've got to be careful. It still works, but I'm um, pretty sure that's um, essential to be in one piece. Um, and that's just um, um, double-sided tape under there. So you can stick it to things. So you can put these into anything. People build them into bench tops. Um, bed head rests, um, mouse mats, you know, it just goes on and on and on. So this connects to the control board um, and the control board gets fed with power and does everything it needs to do. Now this exact unit, the unit you're looking at right here, I bought two of them because I always seem to break things um, the first time. This was $13. Now it's QI, um, it's 15 watts and it works absolutely wonderfully. Now, um, there are much, much, much cheaper ones around, but I picked this one because it was the 15 watts and it had the QI, and most importantly, it could handle 12 to 24 volt input. So I didn't need to drop down to five volts like a lot of the cheaper ones, um, and blah, blah, blah. Otherwise, I'd have to be mucking around with um, buck converters and all that kind of stuff. So this has all of that on the one board. All right, so that's all you really need, but where do you get the 12 volts from? So, after pulling this, oh, just lost my screwdriver. After pulling this out and realizing that I could gain access to the back of this panel, I started poking around, hoping that I could get um, something that feeds the USB ports. Then I just thought, well, why am I bothering with that when there's a nice, big, juicy, 120 watt, sorry, 180 watt, um, 12 volt um, cigarette lighter there. Why don't I just tap off the back of that? So I did. And that's exactly what this cable is. It's a cigarette lighter, um, basically a, 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 a tap adapter. So you unplug the original cable, which looks like this, on the back of your cigarette lighter. Um, so you unplug that, which is what I've done up in here, just at the back of that. Oh, there we go. Will it focus? Yes, it will. So you can see where that red wire leads. There's a black plug on the back of the cigarette lighter socket there. Um, that is now this adapter's plug. And the original Kia um, cigarette lighter plug then plugs into here. And you can just sort of tuck that away um, out of harm's reach there. And then you get a very convenient and non-destructive way of getting access to 12 volts. Fantastic. Um, so this is from AliExpress and this is also from AliExpress. Um, this again is just a proof of concept. It is not the final version. Um, but if anyone wants to know um, where to get these exact parts or any other information or in fact if anyone's interested in me maybe um, making a kit up um, for them to do a similar installation once I do the final version um, let me know in the comments of this video um, because depending on the interest maybe I'll manufacture a few kits I don't know anyway um, so far we're looking at about $13 and about within $5 and yeah let's say let's say 20 bucks so $20 done so the fact that Kia doesn't put $20 worth of wireless charger in the bottom end models just blows my mind but I suppose it's the way they can differentiate between the different model grades anyway 
So what you can see here is amazingly, this is um, this is called a Hammond Hammond box. Hammond make plastic cases for um, silly tinkerers like myself to build things into. Um, I'm very very used to their high quality um, plastic boxes. Um, I've forgotten the actual number of this box because the Hammond range is all based on numbers, but this is amazing because I'll just point out the the mounting holes in each corner one, two, three, and four actually line up. I couldn't believe it when I took it out of the box with the mounting posts on the bottom. Um, it doesn't line up perfectly but it lines up so you don't need to modify this circuit board at all and I found four very 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 small screws and you can just see them there one two there's three on the top corner um, and I actually lost the last one and now I can't find them at all but I think they're from a piece of vintage gear going by the fact that they've just got a flat um, screw head so that screwed into there beautifully I've fed it with 12 volts from the cigarette lighter adapter um, but I've also passed it through that's just a temporary fuse you should always fuse everything you do that fuse has uh, the fuse holder has a one amp fuse in it the reason I picked one amp is because when I originally tested this board in this sort of format I realized the current draw at the 12 volt end was about 400 milliamps um, to begin with and then it ramped up to about 800 milliamps um, while it was charging at full speed so I think one amp is quite okay I may even have to take that up to 1.25 amps if I have any dramas that's a fast blow fuse in there too so that means if anything happened with this or anything happened with my wiring um, after that fuse um, that fuse would just blow straight away so the output um, I've got going through this cable I've put it into a um, plug and socket that's just a standard DC barrel connector um, I've extended the wire between the coil and the circuit board um, to do that um, I didn't know if that was actually going to work but um, yeah it works absolutely perfectly even with all the added resistance of a connector the only problem is this connector won't fit through the existing holes under that mat and I'll just show you that um, I'll actually show you the whole thing working so I'm just going to reach over and turn it on uh, if I can oh yep okay oh, I've got to scan my fingerprint hang on a tick yep okay so there we go so and the music comes on of course so you can see there that this unit has powered up, the red light is on, I'll just turn that music down, um, the red light is on and if I come over here now with just an old phone um, that the battery level is at 90%, I'll put that on here, boom, there you go, so that's now, um, should be fast charging. Um, that is a very old phone, but I tested it on the phone I'm using to record this video, which has a very thick case on it, and it works beautifully. Oh, sorry, that's another reason I picked this particular wireless charger. It can do up to 14 millimeters of thickness, it can penetrate through, which is important because if um, you get one of the cheaper ones, they can only do like one millimeter, which isn't going to be enough to get through the two and a half, three millimeters of rubber, let alone anything else that we might put in there. While it's charging, the light goes green. So I can take that off and watch that light. Um, light should turn red. Yep, there you go. Put that back. And there you go, it turns green. It works beautifully. So let me just show you under here. Um, so this mat got a little handle on the end and you can just peel that up. And there you go. So that is the charging coil right there. Um, so the charging coil I based for the center at the bottom of the mat are a whole heap of pegs that fit into these holes um, and these two bolts um, I removed from these two big holes here. I probably didn't need to but um, it did give me a little bit more flex, um, tiny little bit more flex so you may not need to do that. 
Anyway, the issue I have now is to somehow figure out how to um, pass the wiring through maybe that hole um, to feed the coil because that then can just be passed straight up underneath and into this void under this plastic molding um, where this box can basically just sit. Um, this box just clamps up. I'll just show you. It's a great little design. Oh, no, I can't do it with one hand, but it just clips together and looks something similar to that. There you go. Yeah, it did work. Beautiful. Um, and it's most importantly, it's got a lot of um, breathing uh, holes um, because when I had my phone charging on this, um, in that case, just sitting in um, up in the lounge room, um, it actually got quite warm. I'm not going to say hot. Um, I'm not going to say very warm, but moderately warm. So it's definitely going to need to breathe. You're not going to be able to put that board in a sealed box unless it's metal and you've got heat sinking and everything all attached. So, so yeah, um, that's the current status of this project. Um, I'm hoping to not, um, have to damage or destroy any of this hard plastic. Um, I am considering, um, the need for, um, removing that peg and maybe modifying these just the tiniest little bit because as you can see that coil is just about the right size it does hit the sides a little bit and I think that's what made um, this one crack it's just got a tiny tiny little crack in it I heard it crack and I thought oh god but yep still works as you saw um, and I'm even considering um, maybe making up another rubber mat um, to put under this mat um, and then cutting the 70 mil hole in the the liner rubber mat and also cutting out these um, uh, rubber posts in the um, under the underlay mat so it all just sort of sits nice and neat and tidy um, so yeah anything I do need to damage has to be replaceable, easily replaceable. So if I do need to cut this peg off or something um, extremely minimalist like that, then so be it, because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be able to find another one of these and within two seconds, I can replace it. Um, I don't want to attach this anywhere. Um, I'll just let that sit. If I need to wrap that in sort of like foam to stop it rattling or um, felt or something like that, so be it as long as I don't cover up those air vents. Um, but yeah, again, as per my other modifications, the key is they have to be 100% um, uh, removable uh, without causing any damage to the original car, um, wiring or plastics or anything like that. So yeah, all I have to do is maybe replace this um, and then pull this out, unplug the plug at the back, um, plug the cigarette lighter back in, pull this whole assembly out, and the car is back to factory standard. Okay, guys, um, let me know if you're interested in this, because once I figure out how I'm going to get all this um, sorted and figure out a way of doing it so I don't crack <laughs> my, my next version, um, yeah, I um, depending on interest, I may make up some kits with the fuse and the adapter and the soldering all done all you've got to then do is pull your plastic out plug it in feed the wire through and job's done okay hope you enjoyed it see ya